In this video we're going to look at a new package called Embed Chain and this allows you to very easily create language model powered bots over any data set. In this introduction video we're going to show how to use this library but in future videos we're going to build some tools around Embed Chain and I can elaborate more at the end of the video on what we might build but let's get started for now. I have the Embed Chain GitHub repository open here and as you can see it's a framework to easily create LLM powered bots over any data set and it abstracts the entire process of loading a data set, chunking it and creating embeddings and then storing those embeddings in a vector database such as Chroma DB. And if we look at the code below here you can see that we have an app object that's being instantiated and then below that we are adding resources to that app object iteratively and each resource will give more context to your bot that you're creating. And you can add different resource types as you can see here, for example, YouTube videos, PDF files, and also web pages. And once you've added your resources, what you can do is query the bot with a particular prompt, and then you will get back a response. And that response is coming from the language model on the back end, which is the OpenAI language model. So Embed Chain provides a way to add these resources and it handles all of that process of embedding the text within those resources and then sending the request to OpenAI and then getting the response that is informed by the content that you've added as resources. So let's get started. I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code and we have here a main.py file. So you can create a Python file where you can store the code that we're going to use in this video and it can be called anything you want. And what I'm doing at the moment in the main.py file is I'm using the python.env library and we're importing the function load.env and we're calling that function on line 4 here. And what that's going to do is it's going to load from our local.env file the OpenAI API key. So in order to use embed chain you need to make sure you have that API key and that has to be stored in a .env file and then you can use the python.env library in order to load that into the operating system environment. Now on the terminal below here, I have a virtual environment activated in Python. What we can do is to get started, we can actually install these libraries. So we can install python.env to start with, and we can also install the embed chain library as well. Once these are installed, we can go back to our main.py script. And after we have loaded in the .env file, what we can do is from the embed chain library, we can import the app object. And then we can create an app object by instantiating that. And instead of calling it app, I'm actually going to call this politics bot. We're going to create a bot that is informed of the political positions of the Republican and Democratic Party in America. And this is an apolitical video. I'm not interested in either of these parties. So let's start by learning how to add resources to the bot. Make sure here that I spell this correctly. What I'm going to do is go to Wikipedia and we're just going to use that for simplicity to start with. Later in the video, I'm going to show how to load in a YouTube video and transcribe that and use that as part of your context here for the bot. But for now, I'm going to look at the political positions of the Republican Party. So let's copy the URL here at the top and we can go back to VS Code and we're going to add the resource to our politics bot with the add function here. And the first parameter to that is the type of resource that we're adding. We're going to specify a web page here. And the second parameter is the resource itself. So we're going to paste the link to that Wikipedia article on the Republican Party. And there's a very similar page on Wikipedia for the Democratic Party. So we're going to add that just below the link to the Republican Party. So we have both of those Wikipedia pages added to the context here. We're adding them as resources for our bot and our bot is then going to take the text that it's extracting from those pages and it's going to store them in a vector database. It's going to embed that text and store it in the underlying database and that is going to be used as context when we call the OpenAI models on the back end using the API. So in order to call those models we need to use our politics bot here and we have a function called query and this is just going to take a prompt that we want to enter there. So we're going to ask a question to the OpenAI model on the back end, the language model, and then we're going to get a response back and we can then use that response in our application. So we're sending the request to the language model and we are sending also this context that we're adding to the bot and then we're getting back a response. So let's start with this question. What are the positions of the political parties on same-sex marriage? And we can store the response in a variable called answer. And then after we've sent the query, we can print that answer to the terminal in this case. You can also output that to a Streamlit application if you're using Streamlit or any other tools that are similar to that. And then we can run this script with the python main.py command. And that is going to then send that request, generate the response and print it to the terminal. So let's see what happens here. Now to begin with, what's happening is it's extracting the text from those web pages and on the top two lines here you can see that it's chunking them together and storing the chunks in the vector database. 
Now that's something to note about embed chain. If we go back to its documentation and scroll to the very bottom here, you can see the tech stack that this library uses under the hood. So it's using Langchain as an LLM framework to load, chunk and index the data. It's using OpenAI to create the embeddings that are stored in the vector database. It's using the chat GPT API as the language model in order to get answers given the context. And finally, it's using Chroma as the vector database to store the embeddings. Now, if you're interested in vector databases, I'm thinking of doing a lot of videos on this. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments. It's a very new thing, so I'm also learning about that at the moment, but very interesting topic. So let me know if you're interested in some videos on that. Let's go back to our application now, and you can see the answer that has been generated by the language model. And it says here that the Democratic Party generally supports same-sex marriage, while well, the Republican Party has historically been more divided on the issue. But in recent years, there has been a shift within the Republican Party and a growing number of Republicans are in favour of same-sex marriage. And as of 2017, a majority of Republicans were no longer opposed to same-sex marriage. So it's taking this information from the context that we provided to the bot. And in this case, that context is two Wikipedia articles, but you can provide much more than just two articles or two documents to the language model here. And indeed, if you provide more context, the language model will have more to go on and it's likely to generate better responses. And it's able to synthesize knowledge that's stored across multiple documents and multiple resources and give answers to questions and queries that involve the topics that are discussed in those documents. So this is an example of getting a response from the language model. Let's change the prompt here and we're going to use a different one. What are the positions of the Republicans and the Democrats on climate change and environmental issues? So let's clear the terminal at the bottom and rerun the main.py script. And this time at the top, you can see that the articles have already been embedded and they already exist in the database. The chunks that are generated from the text in those articles already exist in the database. So it doesn't have to go through that embedding process again. But below that, you can see the output. The Republicans' assessment on the seriousness of climate change has remained essentially unchanged over the past decade. On the other hand, the Democrats have favoured taking action to address the issue. And as it says at the bottom, the Democrats will acknowledge the threat and the Republicans are more sceptical in general. So that's the response from the chatbot on this particular query. Let's add one more query here and then we'll move on. So I'm going to paste another query in here. What are both parties' stances on taxation? Let's run the script again at the bottom and hopefully we'll get some output on this question. And you can see the response at the bottom. Republicans generally believe in lower tax rates, particularly for those who create jobs and wealth. Republicans also tend to oppose the estate tax, whatever that is. Democrats, on the other hand, generally support higher tax rates, especially for the wealthy, in order to fund government programmes and reduce income inequality. So I think this bot, based on just a simple Wikipedia article for each party, is getting the general positions fairly correct for both parties on these issues. And you can imagine the power of this if you added more context and you were able to ask more in-depth questions about the political opinions or positions of these parties. And this can be extended, of course, to any topic or any document that you want to create a chatbot around or some sort of question answering tool around a set of information. So let's move on and we're going to add some more resources to the context for this bot. If we go back to the browser, I have two pages open here on two American politicians. We've got Ted Cruz and we also have Hillary Clinton and I'm only picking these two because, well, they're quite divisive politicians as far as I'm aware. So let's go with this and add these to the context. We're going to copy the URLs for both of these politicians and this is actually a site called Rational Wiki. I have no idea if this site is more left or right leaning and to be honest, I don't really care about that. So let's go Go back to VS Code. We're going to add these to the context at the bottom. Politicsbot.add. And again, these are web pages. We're going to see a YouTube example in a second. And we'll paste in there the link to this article on Ted Cruz. And we can copy that line of code below there and we can add the link to Hillary Clinton as well. So let's remove this particular query that we're asking the bot here and we're going to paste in a new one now. Let's ask our bot to sum up Ted Cruz in a few sentences. So we'll clear the terminal and we can rerun the script. Now you can see as it's running through this, we've added new resources. So it's chunking those and adding them to the vector database. And once they've been added to the vector database, you can see the response from the OpenAI language model below. Ted Cruz is a conservative politician who gained prominence for his efforts to obstruct Obamacare. 
He served as Solicitor General of Texas before being elected as a Senator, and he's associated with the Tea Party movement and known for his 21-hour speech against Obamacare. So that's Ted Cruz in a few sentences, apparently, uh, from the politics bot here. Let's now ask a very general question about Ted Cruz. Do people like Ted Cruz? So let's clear the terminal here and run main.py and see what the language model thinks about this question. And the answer here is that based on a given context, it can be inferred that both Republicans and Democrats have a strong dislike for Ted Cruz. Therefore, it can be concluded that people in general do not like Ted Cruz. Quite a scathing assessment of Ted Cruz from Embed Chain's bot here. Let's create one final prompt on the topic of Ted Cruz. Create three funny nicknames for Ted Cruz from the context. So let's execute main.py and we can see what we get back for this one. And you can see the three nicknames at the bottom. We've got Flower Squirter Ted, we've got Ted the Unlovable, and we have Spineless Ted. So there are some nicknames for Ted Cruz. Let's now move on to asking some questions about Hillary Clinton. Let's replace the query that we're passing in here, and we're going to now sum up Hillary Clinton in a few sentences, and we'll see what comes back from the language model for Hillary Clinton here. And actually, I'm getting back an error here. It's a service unavailable error from OpenAI's API. So it's saying that the server is overloaded and you might get these problems when you're calling the API. At times, this API, I find it quite unreliable, but that is, of course, due to the amount of people that are using it. So hopefully, as time goes on, it can be more reliable. Let's try this again after giving it a couple of seconds break here. And we have at the bottom a very simple description here of Hillary Clinton summed up in two sentences. Hillary Clinton is an American politician and a member of the Democratic Party and she served as Senator for New York and ran for President twice in 2008 and 2016. So it's getting that correct from the article that we've added on Hillary Clinton. Let's add another query here on Hillary Clinton. What issues do other Democrats have with Hillary Clinton. Let's run that script and we can see the output from the language model for this one. And you can see the output at the bottom. Many Democrats have expressed dissatisfaction with Hillary Clinton's close ties to the finance industry, particularly her relationship with Lloyd Blankfein of Goldman Sachs. There's also tension within the Democrats over her presidential bid, with many anti-establishment grassroots and left-leaning individuals expressing concerns about her and other present-day plutonomists. So that's some of the issues apparently with Hillary Clinton within the Democratic Party itself. Let's now move on from these politicians and we're going to look at something a little bit different now. We're going to look at how we can use a YouTube video as a resource for this bot. And I'm going to use this video here. This is a travel video. It's the top 100 places to visit in Europe. And this is by a guy called Ryan Shirley who's on YouTube doing a lot of travel videos. We're going to use the link for this video and we're going to bring it into our embed chain application. So let's go back to the application and I'm going to remove all of this context that we've added and this time we're going to add a different type of resource. It's going to be a YouTube video and again we provide the link to the video that we want to add. Now what Langchain or rather what Embed Chain is going to do under the hood here is it's going to go to the link that we provide for the YouTube video and it's actually going to download the audio or it's going to transcribe that audio from audio to text and it's going to use tools provided by the Langchain library in order to do that and Langchain has these document loaders and there are document loaders for YouTube videos provided by Langchain. Again, if you're interested in more content around that, just let me know in the comments. So what I'm going to do is remove this prompt that we've been using here and I'm going to paste in another one. Which places are in Italy from this YouTube video? Now remember the YouTube video is about the top 100 places in the whole of Europe, according to this guy at least. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and find which places are in Italy that he recommends. So let's try and run this again by running python main.py and we can see the output that's generated. And you can see that what's happening with the YouTube video is it's chunking that video and it's saving those chunks to the database, the vector database. And below that we have the output of three or four places from Italy that are mentioned in his video on European travel destinations. So it has successfully extracted those Italian destinations from that YouTube video. And we can look at other queries, for example, what places are in Scotland. And you can see the output below, Glencoe and the Glenfinnan Viaduct are both in Scotland. And those are the two places he's visited in this video. Let's quickly add two more queries that we're gonna use for this chatbot. What we're gonna ask here is, if I love hiking and mountains, where should I go in Europe? 
When we run that, we're hopefully going to get back some output with a useful suggestion based on the video content about where we can go if we want to go hiking or mountaineering. And you can see that we have the answer provided below. Based on the context provided, you should consider visiting the Italian Dolomites. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of it. What I'm going to do is add one more prompt to this chatbot and then we're going to finish the video. Now, if you watch this guy's videos, he loves to jump off cliffs into the ocean. So what I'm going to ask is what places are the best for cliff jumping? Let's clear the terminal and execute the script. And you can see a couple of places mentioned, including the island of Ponza in Italy, as places where cliff jumping is possible. So you can see from this video how easy it is to add resources, whether it's web pages or PDF files or YouTube videos, to the context of an embed chain application and then generate a chatbot that's able to answer queries and questions based on that context. Now, if you're interested in more videos on this, what I'm thinking of doing is creating a Streamlit application that allows users to upload their own files and web pages and include them as part of the context and basically create their own chatbot around the resources that they have uploaded and then provide a prompt to allow them to query that chatbot and interact with it. And if there's any interest, I'm also thinking of creating a video where we build a chatbot in a web application with a backend that could be a Django backend or a fast API backend or even a Go web application. So thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any other ideas, please let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.